welcome to Health Matters on Channels Television. Thanks for joining us. I am Mary Alale Yusuf. The World Hemophilia Observance is peculiar because it encompasses all bleeding disorders. Now, von Wilbraham disease is a genetic disorder caused by a missing or defective von Wilbraham factor, a clotting protein. This results in bleeding when factor 8 fails to bind with platelets in blood vessel walls. Von Wilbraham disease is the most common inherited bleeding disorder, affecting about 1% of the population. It takes its name from Dr. Eric Von Wilbraham, who first described the condition in 1926. Now, unlike hemophilia, which affects only boys, Von Wilbraham disease affects boys and girls equally. My guest is a consultant hematologist and head of department of hematology and blood transfusion at the Lagos University Teaching Hospital, Idiaraba, that's Professor Sulaiman Akomu. Also joining us is Mrs. Wobola Olaleye, who is living with von Wilbrand disease. I'm very happy to have both of you on the show. Welcome. Thank you. Let me start with you, Doctor. I'm seeing factor eight there. So how is von Wilbrand different from hemophilia, which usually is a problem with factor eight and factor nine? Uh, the two uh, coagulant proteins are intimately related. Okay. The von Willebrand factor is a big protein and serves as a carrier protein for factor 8. Okay. So if an individual is really severely deficient in von Willebrand factor, you will be equally deficient in factor 8. Because that carrier protein, what you need to transfer uh, factor 8 around in your blood will be deficient. Does that mean the person will have both von Wilbrand and hemophilia? You will have a more severe disease. Okay. You will have presentation that looks like that of von Willebrand and at the same time presentation that looks like that of hemophilia. So the disease is, is, a, is a lot severe. So if it's deficiency of factor 8 alone, von Willebrand protein is there and we do its work. Okay. And there is a type of bleeding that an individual that has factor 8 deficiency, that they, that's a type of bleeding that they have. We call it coagulant bleeding. Now, if the problem is that of factor von uh, Willebrand disease, now the type of bleeding that you, that you suffer from, we call it vascular bleeding because the von Willebrand protein works together with the blood vessel to prevent blood loss when an injury is done to the blood vessel. What happens is that when you have a cut, don't mind those uh, surgeons because they deliberately cause individuals to bleed with their knives. They put their knives on people's skin, on people's tissues, and you expect that by the time you have a cut on the blood vessel, what God Almighty puts there is uh, the ability of the blood vessel to contract and narrow the gap that your knife has caused. But that is not sufficient. Because when the knife touches the blood vessel, there's one type of cell that is, that is lining the innermost part of the blood. We call it endothelial cells. Those endothelial cells are lost and they'll be freely flowing in the blood. They will not be able to come back and seal that place. What is able to seal the cord uh, tissue is the platelet. So the platelet will now go to occupy the area where the endothelial cells have been dislodged. Now, where the vulnerable comes in is that the platelet is not able to attach to the place the endothelial cell has been dislodged. You need an adhesive protein okay. that is going to bind the platelet and anchor the platelet onto the surface of the cord injured or injured blood vessel. And that protein so, is the von Willebrand factor. And that adhesive protein is the von Willebrand protein. So is it that there's no von Willebrand or is it that it's not working? There is no acquired uh, deficiency of von Willebrand disease. If you have von Willebrand disease, you are born with it. It's an okay. inherited disorder. So it means the gene in the, that you're supposed to have inherited from your parent is defective. In that, that gene is defective, and you are not able to produce the von Willebrand protein. 
Now, that formula prime protein I told you is a big molecule. It's a mm. big protein. It is usually synthesized in small, small uh, sizes, and several sizes must join together to form what we call a giant uh, von Willebrand molecule. So if you, you, do, you, you do not have the ability to complex your small, small uh, uh, molecules together to form a giant protein, you probably will have a von Willebrand factor that is defective. Okay. Because it's a giant molecule that is actually effective. Let, let me address this question to Mr. Laleye. Um, I know, okay, obviously this is a bleeding thing. It, it causes uh, the blood not to clot and all that, probably at different sites of the body. But when did you become aware that you had von Wilbrand? Well, as a child, I think there was an incident where I had malaria. And my parents took me to the hospital for a normal injection as uh, I think chloroquine and um, um, that must have been yes. long ago because um, chloroquine was ages ago yes and after I got back home put me to sleep and the bed was soaked with blood and they were wondering what was happening it took where me back was the to blood coming from from the injection from sites. the injection the needle sites. yes the needle sites and they took me back to the hospital and you know they tried to control and stop the bleeding and the doctor was wondering what was happening and said the only thing he knew that could cause such a bleeding was hemophilia. Okay. He didn't know about von Willebrand's. So, you know, subsequently losing a tooth and things like that became big issues. It was not until 2000 and I think 2005 when I went to the university and because of that, I, anywhere I am, I have to be in touch with the hospital to take care of myself. And when I got there, they began querying von Willy Brand. That was the first time I heard of it. I didn't know what it was. So I had, my dad went online then and he downloaded, he got materials and I read up on it. So I knew, you know, that with that knowledge came a little bit of um, liberation, can I okay, say. Yes. So I knew what was the problem. I knew my limits and my limitation, what I was supposed to do to take care of myself better. And that was where the journey started from. The, the what would you say are your limits? What kind of restrictions do you have? Well, I will really say limits as such, but you know, there are some things that you can't necessarily take for granted. Like a normal person could just walk into any dental office and dental clinic and want to do scaling and polishing. Mm -hmm. But I can't do that when I get there. I have to inform the doctors on ground that this is the problem, this is a, the issue I have. And the doctors then begin to look for, you know, things that will come back because you have, you have, you know, injuries and such to Doctor, treat at it. at that point, can she take, you know, the injection caused a major problem during the malaria episode. But I know that they always give you injections. In fact, sometimes they inject up to four sites in the mouth so just to pull it to. For, this, what would she for do? this category of people. Once you have made a diagnosis, you write at the back of their case note, no injectables. Okay. And if you have to do it, the hematologist must be brought in. Mm. So that we, are, we will be able to prepare you to be able to give the same. If you have to go for surgery, you still have to go for surgery. If there's a need for her to have to remove that one tooth, you still have to go for it. If there's a need for her, if he breaks her leg and has to fix it by surgical means, he has to. But... The only difference is that the pathologist must come in so that we are going to give her the factor that she lacks so that she'll be able to maintain... Before the procedure. Before the procedure. Uh -huh, so okay. if she thinks she wants to go and uh, get herself involved in a physical exercise and might just, you know, fall and bleed, of course, there's something we can do to, you know, to prevent that from happening. For her, there's a um, drug that can be used, not just the, the, the factor replacement protein that she lacks. That because a number of patients with vulnerable uh, disease, you can stimulate the cells in their body to produce, to produce to, the yes, factor. To meet a particular hemorrhagic challenge. If okay. she knows that she's going to get herself involved in a surgery that can make her to bleed, we prepare her for that. So you can just take the small person. And of course, uh, you know that you are going for this uh, exercise in the next two, three hours, then you take it now. So we know your factor level will rise, but we know that okay, in so the you next... So you have your blood clotting like anybody else. Yes, but you know that in the next eight hours it's gone.
Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you know, that's good, being able to know, you know. But is there anything like spontaneous bleeding, the way hemophiliacs are? You just, you're just sitting down, pretty by yourself, and you start bleeding. Yeah. I know that happens in hemophilia. Yeah, yes. For me, usually it's my gums. Okay. I might just be talking to someone and maybe I smile at you and the person says, there's something in your teeth and your mouth. Why, wow. why is it bleeding? That must have been challenging. Yes, or just sitting down. Especially because I grew up in the north. During the cold weather, the Hamatan period, the nose bleeds. Yes. Then, because, you know, the weather is very dry and... Even just, for regular people, let, okay, since we are on this subject, let me just ask. Let me not assume I know. Is every nosebleed a Von Wilbrand thing? Mm. Because some people bleed and they say, oh, don't worry, just raise your head up, pinch your nose, it's going to go. There is a small place in the nose, they call the lithus area. That area is easily subjectable to erosion and can easily bleed and there's no pathology. Okay. But if there's an underlying pathology, you are more likely to bleed severely from that particular location. Okay. So for an hemophiliac, for a vulnerable disease individual, little or imperceptible injury to that place, you will bleed, now make it very you will pronounced. bleed as if a tap was open. So wow. That's the problem. Now that you speak about a tank being opened, do you have problems with anemia? Yes, from time to time. You know, I'm a bit puzzled here because from the figures I got, it says for the 10,000 or so hemophiliacs that we probably have in, in Nigeria, there's 2 million von Wilbrand sufferers. But the name is so strange. I'm sure if I take a poll of, you know, people, very few would have heard of this, this, uh, this, this von disease. Von disease. And why? Why is that? Well, you can't... Uh, it's difficult to say why is that. Even among the healthcare providers, the knowledge about uh, bleeding disorders is, is uh, a little bit weak. And I, like, as we were as celebrating the World Hemophilia Day Federation, World Hemophilia Day a uh, few days ago, I had the opportunity of actually telling people that the knowledge of bleeding disorders, particularly even the hemophilia you're talking about, not even just the vulnerable disease, that knowledge is very, very weak. And I think it has to do with uh, medical curriculum. Uh, I wonder how many uh, medical schools, you know, in, even in Nigeria, have the subject hemophilia, or whatever disease, as part of the medical curriculum, part of the training that medical student, you know, receives. Part of a medical training or uh, 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 a training that the nurse receives while in school of nursing, and even the pharmacist. Do we have this subject as part of the topic the that is even mentioned in class? That's the thing. I, from the University of Badaway, I train, I still have my medical student note. Those things are there. And we are teaching here now in the medical school. In, because you go to some places, you find out that you, just, you are just asking somebody about hemophilia and he's thinking you are talking about sickle cell disease or something like that. Okay. That is the thing. So I think we really need to do more work you know, uh, for, for enlightenment. We have to go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue the discussion. Please stay with us. We're coming back with Von Wilbrand right after now. Welcome back. We're talking about von Wilbrandt's disease, a bleeding disorder. Now, if you want to ask any questions about the disease, the number to call is 0808-054-2233. That's 0808-054-2233. You can also tweet at CTV underscore Mary A. I want to ask you, Ms. Olaleye, do, do, is it a challenge for you to get your medication? And, and is this something you have to use often as, I mean routinely, let me put it that way. So as the doctor said, usually it's maybe I have um, a procedure coming up. I could get the factors and thankfully Hemophilia Foundation Nigeria gets these fact factors from, for us and we get it from them. That's if I have something that I'm preparing to do. But for the spontaneous bleedings, 
before now I had to, you know, improvise, you know, maybe listen to the old wife still of raising your head up and pinching your nose and tying a place and But you can't do but that for your gums. You, you can't know? do that for your gums, you know. In, over time the bleeding just continues well and leads to an, anemia a lot of times. Let me just pause you there for a while and take this call from Ibrahim. Hello Ibrahim. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Ibrahim. What's your question? Please, my question is, what are the symptoms, symptoms of the disease? Okay, thank you. We'll get to that. So Ibrahim wants to know what are the symptoms of the disease. I know it's bleeding, but bleeding from where? <laughs> yes, the symptoms actually start from the time that the baby is being separated from its mother at birth. By the time you are severing what they call the umbilical cord that attaches the baby to the placenta, you begin to see that the umbilical cord will continue to ooze and ooze and ooze and bleeding will not Even stop. For a new right from the time of birth, particularly those of them that have you know, uh, severe hemophilia. Now, if it were a male child, that will, that's going to be a big problem because by the time it's um, uh, seven days or CDD, you want to circumcise a child, oh. then you run into serious trouble. That bleeding will not stop. When the child appears to be green up and then starts to crawl, those minor injuries that will happen to no matter nothing happens, not to an hemophilia or a vulnerable you know, child, you continue to have a current bleeding. You fall and then you hit your tongue because the bleeding will be there permanently and non stop. In fact, it's more severe. To bleed from the tongue or from anywhere in the mouth because any part of the body that is bathed by what we call body fluid for the mouth is the saliva. It makes not, clotting even bleed, more difficult. The bleeding will not stop. For what God Almighty has put in the body fluid that does not naturally make blood to clot. So if you bleed into the brain, the blood will not clot. You bleed into the urine, that that, that uh, your blood will not clot because it's body, your urine is a body but fluid. Can, can they be bleeding into the brain though? Intracranial bleed, that's what kills our patients. So you have categories of bleeding. The man has just has for the symptoms. But okay. you can sit down here and use another one now to talk about the symptoms. Okay. Uh, just start from, but as you grow up, the, the different types of bleeding you know, will start to come. So when the child is just under five and plays around, of course, you re the parent has to really, you know, be hauled over a growing child, particularly if it's a, stim if it's a severe bleeder. So, uh, small, small fall, you run into trouble. I, I told the story of a uh, twin brother that were growing up, I know, as hemophiliac. The other one would kick his brother uh, on the scrotum, you know, with his leg, and the, the, the thing would swell up, it would be bleeding into this. Into this Sorry, into Doctor, let me pause you a little while. We have to take our corners. Hello. Mm -hmm. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hello, good afternoon, madam. Pat? Okay. So, yes. good afternoon. From Port Harcourt. From Port Harcourt. You're have welcome. A baby. Yeah, she's about seven to eight years. And she bleeds sometimes in the nose. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Go on. Okay. I my baby bleeds sometimes in the nose. All right, and you, you just want to know what it's all about. It could be a number of things, right? It could be a number of things. It could just be normal. It could just be dry weather. But that baby must be investigated for bleeding disorder. So that means that a common nosebleed that people said, oh, don't bother about it. It's going to go. Please you bother. should investigate. Please bother. Just in case. Just in case. And most likely you are going to find a cause. Because it may not just be the, the von Willebrand. May not be hemophilia, maybe the platelet itself okay. that is low, is this or maybe the platelet itself that is dysfunctional. Okay. These are the issues. I, is it something that has to be clinically diagnosed? Well, the person must come to the hospital. The, the, it is already diagnosed clinically, it's a bleeder. Yes, it's the bleeder. person is a bleeder. So you have but to... What kind of bleeder? You know? Yes. Is it so, hemophilia? Is it von Wilbrand? Or is it something else? That, that's why I said there are two categories of bleeding coagulant bleeding, mm -hmm. and then what we call vascular bleeding. Vascular bleeding means that you bleed more often into the skin. 
Okay. And you can bleed from the mucosa surfaces, including the nose. So that is vascular bleeding. For the real hemophiliac, they bleed into the joint. They bleed into the muscles. And for both of them, they can bleed into the brain. Intracranial bleeding, when it is severe. Okay. So um, let's just find out a little more about this. This uh, You said that usually it's inherited, right? It's not something that somebody gets later on in life. Well, today we are, we are now beginning to talk about acquired hemophilia. That's okay. and something we're just discovering now, that an individual just, just uh, develop an antibody that is interacting and neutralizing your hemophilic protein, your factor 8 protein. Okay. And factor 8 protein no longer able to work. So you become deficient. So that's an acquired well, that is very uncommon, but when it, when it happens, it's a, it's a serious disease. Can, can't people at least, you know, if there are people who come for antenatals, can't they at least uh, be informed that, okay, this is how you are, and you have a tendency to give your child a von Wilbrandt disease or a bleeding disorder, so watch out, you know, because it sounds like it's something that just falls on somebody by surprise. Not just the child now, even the pregnant woman too. Because when she puts to bed and she's, she bleeds more than necessary, she herself must be suspected to be a bleeder. So some of these cases where they say someone bled to death what, after having a baby, yes, is not even what a mystery. You, what, you, what you call postpartum hemorrhage. So they, they, you see, 90, 95% of women will have their child bath and they will get off, they, they, will, they, will, they, they, they get dry. But you have this few proportion of women that will continue to bleed. The obstetrician will give you a, a thousand and one causes of, of uh, uh, postpartum uh, hemorrhage, but they always forget that some people have this bleeding diabetes that is inherited. And they always forget that. So when they have now looked for all the other causes of obstetric bleeding, they, are not, they, they, they don't find it. That you have to query a bleeding a disorder. Sometimes some of them are smart to invite dermatologists. What is going on here? And if you do that fast enough, then we save more people. Uh, the mm -hmm. first thing is that we don't even begin to investigate. We want to save that life for. I imagine that. Just give the blood. You must just have give lost the blood. a lot of just, people. Yeah, to yeah this, just, this just give a replacement factor because once once you have what we call the plasma, fresh frozen plasma in the just because whatever might be the deficiency in that individual is usually available in the fresh protein plasma. So we want to save this, then we we'll begin to investigate. Okay, I just want to ask you, Mr. Lale, hemophiliacs usually tell me that they have something like an aura, like a premonition that they're going to bleed. I don't know how it comes, they know better. Do you have that kind of thing? Yes, you know your, you, you know your body. You've lived with this. I mean, you're living with it. So at some time, your body gives you a signal that something, something is, is about, about to, to happen. happen. At least that's a comfort. Yeah. We have to end the show. <laughs> We've come really? to the end of the show. Yes, <laughs> it's been wonderful having you. And this has been so interesting. <laughs> Thank you for coming to the show. Thank you, so Thank you for staying with us and watching us from your home or wherever you're watching. Pat, thank you so much, Ibrahim. Have a wonderful day. I am Mary Alale Yusuf.